So in this video, we're going to talk about a topic under abstract algebra, specifically about definition of a group. So what is a group? So here's the definition. A group is a set G together with an operation star. So star can be either plus or times or other operations which are not the usual operations like plus and times such that it satisfies the following properties first closure meaning if there is a uh, numbers or whatever element it is element of set G then a star B is an element of G meaning if you're going to add two integers the result will be also an integer if you're going to times two integers the result will also be an integer so another property is identity property so it, meaning if there is um, element e which is an element of the set g such that a star e equals e star a is equal to a meaning there is an identity element present uh, denoted as e where if you apply the binary operation whether it's plus or times so it will resolve to uh, its own like in plus we use zero so any number plus zero is just itself or in operation times we have identity element one because we if we multiply uh, any number by one then the result is itself so that's identity property and another property is inverse so a group must satisfy also inverse property so meaning for all uh, element a which is element of set g there is an inverse of that element which is also an element of the set g such that if you apply binary operation of a and its inverse the result will be the identity element so for example if we have um for example five and then plus um negative five which is its inverse then equals zero so that's inverse And then another property is associative property. So for all A, B, C, and element of G, the uh, A star uh, quantity B star C is equal to quantity of A star B star C. So meaning if you are going to regroup uh, the group of elements with its binary operation, so if you're going to apply first the B star C and uh, compared to uh, applying, uh, doing first A star B, they will result to the same answer. So meaning whatever kind of grouping that you are going to do, it's going to be the same result. Now, having all these four properties, then your that set is considered a group if again they all have these four properties now if the group is also a commutative meaning um, for all a b element of g a star b is equal to b star a so meaning you, no problem if you're going to if you're going to interchange that so the it, it satisfies the commutative property we call that group an abelian group but it doesn't mean that group has to be commutative only closure identity inverse and associative that uh, is enough to say that the set is a group but if it's um, at the same time a com uh, satisfies commutative property then we call it an abelian group if not then we call it um, non-commutative group or non-abelian group 
So let's take for example, we want to know if uh, the z or the set of integers under addition is a group. So let us check if it's uh, it satisfies closure property. So if we are going to add two integers, let's say negative one and positive five, it will result to four, which is also an integer. So any number if you uh, any integer, if you add to another integer, it will result to an integer. Okay, so you should not get only one example, but you have to think all the possible pairs and you have to make sure that all of those will result to um, an integer. So, which is actually true. Now for identity property. So, actually, there is an identity element for integers which is zero. Meaning if you're going to add um, any number to the to zero, which is an integer, it will result to itself. So there is an identity element present, and so this is uh, checked. If we're going to check for the inverse property, so any number, if you add it, actually, if you add it with uh, itself, uh, I mean the opposite of itself, it will result to um, the identity element which is zero. So just for, for example here negative seven plus the opposite sign which is positive seven, it's equals to zero. And the opposite is also an integer. So that means inverse property is satisfied. For associative property, we will uh, use three elements from the set of integers. So here we have negative 2, 5, and 3, where we are going to check if we are going to regroup them, will it result to the same answer? So if we're going to add first negative 2 and 5, that is 3, then 3 plus 3 is 6. So at the left side, the answer is 6. While at the right side, if you add 5 plus 3 first, it will result to 8. And then 8 plus negative 2 is positive 6, which is actually the same result. So that means it also satisfies associative property. So since it, it satisfies all the four properties, that means the set of integers under the addition operation is actually a group. Now we are going to check if it's also a commutative. So if we're going to add... Uh, a number, let's say negative 4 and plus 3, and interchange, interchange them with 3 plus negative 4, which are actually the same. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. 3 plus negative 4 is also negative 1. So for any pairs of integers, if you are going to in interchange them with the addition operation, it is going to be the same result. So it's also satisfying commutative property. So that means this is a group which is an abelian group. Now let's have another example. So is a set of integers under multiplication operation a group? Let us try to check. So let us check closure property. We have negative 1 times 5 which are both integers. It results to a negative 5 which is also an integer. So any integer, if you multiply it with another integer, the result is also an integer. So this is checked. For identity property, if you're going to multiply any integer by 1, which is also an integer, is equal to itself. So there's an identity, identity element for this, which is actually 1. So this is satisfying identity property. For inverse, now if you're going to see that any number multiplied by something should be equal to the identity element. Now you might think that negative 3 will be multiplied by negative 1 third. Okay, so that's how it makes it equals 1. But the problem is negative 1 third is not an integer. It's a fraction. It's part of rational numbers. It's not an integer. And so... This is not satisfying uh, the inverse property. So any property that is not satisfied, even one, uh, will be considered 
not a group. Now let's have another example. So for example, uh, for a set of real numbers under multiplication, is it a group? So this time it is set of real numbers that includes integers, rational numbers, uh, irrational numbers, whole numbers, and so on. So these are set of real numbers. So for closure property, if you're going to multiply two real numbers, so we have a whole number eight and multiplied by a fraction, which is also a real number, the result is a fraction, meaning the result is also a real number. So real number times any real number, the result is also a real number. So it satisfies closure property. Now for identity property, if you're going to multiply any real number, let's say a decimal, which is also a real number, 2.5 times the identity element, which is one, and also a real number is equal to 2.5. So there is uh, an existence of identity element and that means it is uh, satisfied. Now for inverse, okay, so we might think that um, this will work now for inverse, unlike for set of integers where negative three times negative one third will not work because negative one third is not an integer, but negative one third is also a real number. So both are, are real numbers. So um, will this satisfy now? like five times one fifth, that is equals one. Three times one third equals one, two times one half equals one, and so on. So when you say, can we say now that it satisfies the inverse of uh, inv inverse property of this set of integers under the multiplication operation? Now look at this, zero. Zero is actually a real number. So zero times what to get one so actually you don't have anything to multiply to zero to get one or the identity element so you cannot have um, zero times one over zero because that is undefined and that is actually not a real number so that means it does not satisfy inverse property that means the set of real numbers under multiplication operation is not a group Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this video. Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section.